Excellent. Hello and welcome, everybody, to the Star Wars Episode One Racer, uh, a tribute to David Stubbs. Um, this is a special event that we are uh, running. Um, unfortunately, David has had uh, terminally ill health for the last year, but uh, we're going to do this as an honorary event for him. Um, and today we've got our three runners, Nock, Nacho Brado, and Metallica. They're going to uh, compete in the seven tracks which David was uh, always notoriously good for. And uh, actually, my co commentator as well with me, Ben, uh, as being one of the old school runners, uh, we, um, we did quite a lot together. Uh, yeah, but I am Mike. I'm known in the uh, I'm known in the community as Mikey Burger, and uh, yeah, as three in particular, you know, very much part of the old school uh, part of this community before it's uh, before the new group, really. Uh, so players are going to play uh, all the seven tracks of the amateur circuit in order, and their times will be used to give them a rank and they'll give, be given a certain number of points based on those ranks. And then the accumulation of those points will determine who is the, uh, who is the winner of the event, basically. No doubt. And both of us go back to uh, David's era. Um, we, were pretty, we were pretty solid across the board on all the tracks, but on a lot of these tracks, he whooped us really hard for a lot of them, particularly on Mongaza Speedway, which will be the second track here. Yeah, yeah, he was uh, absolutely excellent to that track, and uh, in my opinion, um, probably the best even today on that track. Yeah, he was the first player to break the final 40-second mark a decade ago. Yeah, and if we think that'll be the last second as well that will be broken. We don't think that 38 is possible, I don't think. And actually, if yeah. we, uh, Look on the screen, we can see here we've got David's uh, times here as a, a reference, which our players will uh, have some opportunities to compete against. So obviously they, they've got their, their win counters, so they'll be sort of competing a little bit against each other. But obviously this is an overall event for all the competitors who will uh, have opportunity to, yeah. uh, you know, to see where they come there. But I think any of these beating any of these times will be uh, certainly be something to... Uh, virtually brag about so um yeah particularly with the first two because that bunch of train time is like top 10 top five and mongaza speedway is actually top three still yeah mongaza speedway is actually very excellent i mean it's the the top three times there are literally within the hundredths of seconds so it's it's virtually it's virtually no difference really i take it as the countdown's been given then yeah yeah, I just gave it. Yeah, okay, that's fine for this first race. Um, so, presumably there's just this delay, this 30 second or so delays. Okay, so here we go. So, this is the start of the first race now on Winter Training Course, which is the, well, arguably the simplest track, um, but usually a very competitive one. Yeah. It's uh, probably the most mastered track after Mongaza Speedway. These first two tracks are probably the most mastered tracks in the entire game. Yeah, and I'm interested to see how Nock gets on, actually, because I've, uh, I've never seen her race before, but she seems to be doing a pretty decent job so far. 34. Yeah, decent first laps. Looks like Metallica's slightly in the lead to start with. Yeah. Yeah, Metallica looks like he's. Metallica looks like it's in the lead. Yeah, it's a track where we need a great deal of precision to uh, be competitive here. And there's a lot of bumps that can easily catch you out, and a few. Some of these rocks are a lot more dangerous than look as well. A lot of the smaller ones can easily cause you some problems if you catch them, especially on the final lap, so we'll have to see how how that goes. Yeah, and this is a track where optimally, it's the most optimal traction setting, which is um, 60, 600. Oh, 
Yeah, definitely that high interaction helps here, but it looks like Nacho's coming in 37. So it looks like Nacho's won this first race. Nacho won by just four hundredths of a second. All right, so that's a 137.15. So Nacho, Metallica with a 137.56, and Knock with a 139.57. So we can just see how good uh, David's times are there, being a 135, just as a comparison. Yeah. Very, very strong. Yeah, 135 is really hard to do, particularly in this kind of a setting. I know you only did it once in last year's tourney, and that was like the only 135 ever done in the tourney last year. Yeah. So that's a win for Nacho Brado. And... Um, Probably we can give a little bit of information about our, um, you know, our com competitors. I haven't really been able to speak to them too much, too much about them yet. Um, yes, like I say, I don't know too much about Knock at the moment, but she looks like she she's a new rookie runner. Yeah, Not really new. I'm quite impressed actually with that time for a first, you know, for a first time doing. Yeah, uh, 139 for a rookie is not that bad, actually. No, not, not at all. And um, we can see here Nacho just doing a bit of fine-tuning for the next track. So we see players, um, you know, use different setups depending on the demands of different tracks. This next circuit is probably, as we've already said, is David's, uh, probably his best track. And this is a, a very, very short track. Shortest uh, full track in the whole game. With a lot of, yeah, very fast corners. Um, yeah, see Nacho warming up there. Nacho um, is very, very capable and experienced player. Um, competed, I, I believe, in both tournaments in the last two years. Same and, thing with Metallica. Yeah, and he, uh, you know, uh, I remember one race I had with him that was extremely close. It was within hundreds on. You know, hundreds of a yeah, it was a very long. Yeah, it was hundreds of get. Yeah, I think there might have even been two tracks actually. And, yeah, um, I think there were two tracks. And then up at the bottom, we've got Metallica there, who um, you know, good friend of mine. Um, he uh, came in a very respectable uh, fourth place last year, and uh, probably is a good time as well to mention that this is, uh, you know, kind of a precursor to uh, the. You know the running up annual event um which is kind of scheduled for sort of the 15th of april onwards really so definitely you know if you like pod racing that's something to look out for this track is the one where this track that we're on now is the one that davy was by far the best on by a wide margin third place even today very solid runner on it very hard to uh, even get uh, below 40 seconds even today. So the fact that he got it a decade ago was a pretty incredible achievement. Yeah, I, I don't believe that in the last uh, two tournaments we've actually seen a sub 40, if I if I remember correctly. I think it's just too risky for a tournament setting to get to that sub 40. Yeah, he was uh, he was very dedicated and determined player. Actually, that's one thing I would say about David. You know, he uh, you know he absolutely was not going to give up until he uh, achieved that that time. I remember I remember vividly that. Yeah, I still I still we still have the video on YouTube of him just cheering away as he broke that final second mark a decade ago it was like yes yes great yeah and i can feel the a little bit of nerves here in this uh, this race yeah, yeah i think usually one crash uh, spells it so yeah we'll, uh... and also if you're doing this in a tournament setting that's one of the more harrowing tracks because you always tend to lap the ai even yeah. without upgrades yeah looks and... like it's sorry go on Nacho just crashed to the finish and oh. won. We said it would be quick. <laughs> yeah. 41, 42. Yeah. Yeah, onto the next track, Beatos. 
uh, which is, in my opinion, one of the craziest amateur circuit tracks. Um, oh dense. yes, this pretty dangerous. Four turns, full of full of semi, what we like to call. It. it has a texture kill spot. It has a lot of alternate paths where you have to be really knowledgeable about which path is the right one. Yeah, and it also and... has these ice sections that are very. Uh, slippery but also there's this, the tent section which is common to many of the ando cream tracks which uh increases your speed on it as well so it's kind of like a less lower friction yeah kind of feels well ride it doesn't really save much unless you're going really for a, like world record pace but on the other two tracks that share that tunnel in howard gorge and andobe mountain run which are on different circuits, it's a very significant shortcut. This was a track. It, I actually, this track is a little bit special for me because this was one of the last tracks I broke Wooter Jansen's record, who was the N64 world record holder and world record holder before both of us joined back in 2008. Yeah, I remember trying to, uh, to beat all his records, which was on the I think it was speed demos. Speed demo archives. I still remember how after you just shredded all those times of Wooters that you sub tried to submit it to him and submit it to them, and they rejected it because they couldn't believe how much faster you went. Oh, I, could, I, I didn't know you'd remembered that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a game that's you know seen a, a hell of a lot of development um, in the last few years. But yeah, here yeah. we are off on this crazy track. So there's a lot of options here with the route. You see, they're all all three players going for the uh, the more risky but faster line. We've also seen a death from uh, Knock, unfortunately. And now over to this ice section, which is very slippery, dangerous. Both avoiding the uh, texture kill spot we discussed. And then up to this section, which you've got a choice. You can go. Oh, another death from knock there. Um, just avoiding the cave, which we're not going to see the classic routes, unfortunately. But uh, these are the uh, the quickest lines. It'll be interesting to see where they go here. Do they use the tent, or do they use the same route they've used for lap one? Looks like they're avoiding the tent. Oh, knock's going for the tent though. Quite successfully as well, I should should add. Yeah. Whoa, Nacho crashed. Yeah, yeah that was Metallic is in the lead. Yeah, it was a very ambitious boost actually from Nacho there. And the reason why Nacho and Metallic are tilt there is because that is one of the texture kill spots in the game. Oof, another death from Nock. Yeah, but back in our day, we were based, we did, we just avoided the tent outright. They didn't start taking the tent until like maybe a year or two ago. No, actually, I didn't believe it was faster until about a year ago, and then I started uh, improving my, my best times. I thought, oh, maybe I'll start using tent again. It's kind of like, you know, <laughs> you disregard things, and then suddenly you think, well, actually, maybe I'll, I'll do it again. Yeah. I know with no upgrades, I started using the tent right away when I got into no upgrade runs because of the fact that you boost so little yeah. on no upgrades. It's actually a really great spot to cool down and also floor it. Yeah, and we see Nox death there. I think that's a very common place to experience a death right at the end of the tunnel. It's just, uh, it's yeah. just a slippery fast corner and you've got obviously that additional speed. And Metallica takes this win. It's a new very nice time. Two forty seven for Nacho, two forty two for Metallica. Oh. Uh, what was Nacho's time? I didn't catch that. 
247.220. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I think these longer tracks, they they really um, catch out less experienced players, I think, in general. Um, just because there's so much to remember and so many places where you can experience uh, crashes and things. So. Yeah, but the one at the very end in Spice Mine Run is long, but also deceptively easy. Yeah, that's true, actually. That's true. This... Uh... I mean, we sort of discussed, didn't we, about where we thought tracks belonged, and I think really Beedos, it doesn't belong in an amateur circuit for sure, I think. Yeah. I feel the same way about Vengeance, which is the semi-final track too. Yeah, Vengeance is pretty difficult, and which we're going to see as well um, later. Let's see the yeah. sixth track in this series. Yeah. Aqua Arts Classic, this is the middle track. It's a very bland track since it shares literally everything with sunken cities and bumpies and it's kind of one of these tracks that i would say this is compared to other amateur circuit tracks this track is certainly one that belongs in the amateur circuit this one aquilera's classic yes definitely because yeah. I feel like when it comes to the tracks that belong in the amateur circuit track, I feel like we believe the ones that we're doing are the first two, which were Punta Train, Mangaza, and this one, and also Spice Mine. Yeah, I think it's pretty difficult really to beat any of David's uh, certain, well, most of his times really, but especially kind of the, the first five or six or so, because they're just very, very strong. We yeah. don't usually see such strong times in tournaments because they usually require great risk and uh, obviously you know that can uh, backfire horribly if you're not careful so well i always have a saying for easy what you know what people call easy tracks because you know i mean we consider them easy because there's you know not too many obstacles or you know you're unlikely to 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 crash anywhere but you know the the records are just as difficult here you know in, in some cases they can be even the hardest because it just you just have to play so precisely so yeah no i would agree all the amateur circuit records are pretty much among if not the most mastered because they are the most commonly run tracks in the game yeah what we're looking for here is some very tight lines and some uh you know, good. A lot of it's about boost management, really, and just timing, and so you use your your boosters as effectively as you can for the track, which is uh, not as simple as it sounds. And that's the case with every track in this game, because we have a term called underheating, which refers to oh, not so crashed, and now he's actually in first now. I wonder if he just got uh, stuck on the boost button there. I've experienced that, uh, you know, before. So I've had that a few times place. happen to me too. So that is, yeah, that that's a strange place place to crash. So yeah. But uh, yeah, it looks like Metallica for the moment is uh, leading the race. Yeah. Now a very specific pattern and not doesn't quite recognize the pattern yet pattern for these gates on the aquilaris tracks are left or left front right back first 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 lap opening and closing favors the left side on the second lap and opening and closing favors the right side on the third lap yeah, I swear I've experienced a change though, but I, it was like the other way around for some reason. I was totally confused. <laughs> yeah, but that's usually if you go at a certain pace, it usually goes. Yeah, and obviously, and Sunken, I think, has a slightly different one as well. Yeah. Sunken, I should probably explain, is another track on the Aquilaris planet, uh, Sunken City, which yeah. featured similar, similar aspects of the track. 
Yeah, they share almost everything between these two. Yeah, but Metallica coming up for the final figure eight section here. Looks like he's yeah. uh, on good, uh, good heat management. So you can just hold it together here. Oh, sub 240, which is really hard to do with Aquarius. And that is faster. It's not, that is not bad at all for this track. 239, that's really solid. So that's another win for Metallica. And now going into the final, th going into the quarterfinal track, we now have Nacho and Metallica tied. This next track in Metal Star 100, this is the one track in the game where you have to use the lowest traction and frame rate most optimally. Yeah, th this is not uh, not an easy track in my opinion. It's quite quite demanding. It has some sections which are very high risk, very high reward, and particularly the, uh, what Metallica is going to with this hairpin. Yeah, th this, this is, is the uh, make or breaker on the track. Yeah, it's a very very fast corner. Um, it can be done without breaking if your line is perfect and you use the sliding technique correctly, which is a uh, aspect for the game mechanics. And this is why the low tra frame rate is used because for some reason you slide better at lower frame rates. Yeah, I think it's because of how the game dictates like how long, how many frames, because I think the, the sliding is related to the number of frames, I think is, is the reason. Probably, because on this track I actually held the world record on for about six years, both lap and free lap. Yeah, I, I remember it. It probably is it perhaps in some way attributed to the lower frame rate which you can have with uh, the Nintendo, because I think it Nintendo runs... Nintendo 64 is 24, lowest of the low. Yeah. So I think older computers, are, well, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm guessing probably was, I'm guessing mine was probably 30 frames. That's what I was thinking. The PC and Dreamcast, I think, were like 30. Yeah, so nowadays uh, players can, well, for, at least for these matches, can use between 24 and 60 frames for their races. And uh, it looks yeah. like all three of our players are ready. Another fun fact about this track is that it's also based off of it's also a clone of the real-life Sonoma Raceway in Northern California. Oh yes, I, I know that circuit, yeah. <laughs> I play uh, I play Project Cars, so I know I know what that is. <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah, it, this track is based off of Sonoma Raceway just for fun. I believe wasn't um wasn't Doug Derby based on Laguna Seca as well. Yes, that's correct. Doug Derby is Laguna Seca. Uh, who discovered that? <laughs> I think Lightning found both of those similarities, and he's another runner of this game. He's he's a he's one who's done a lot of the archiving for it. So, yeah, and actually, he uh, I believe helped design the um, the background that we have here, which is uh, of Mongaza Speedway for this event. Yeah, yeah, because that was we did that in honor of him, Davey, because that was this was as we said before the. My guess is speed was by far his best track. Yeah, definitely. And this is exciting. We're going into the quarterfinal with Nacho and Metallica tied. So it can be, it can go either way for Metallica and Nacho. Yeah, you should probably add actually that the uh, the ranks order of the competitors can potentially change depending on future results. Uh, but certainly for the moment. It's very interesting to see how, how this is going to go. I mean, they were very close uh, last year's tournament as well. Yeah. Here we go, the hairpin. Taka makes it. Nacho makes it. 35. Metallica is in a big lead because he lost the least amount of momentum going into the hair, going out of the hairpin. Yeah, she's 37.5 first lap for Nacho. Metallica got a 35, which is really a solid pace for this track. Yeah, 35 is definitely uh, optimal first lap. And we can see that he's using very low frame rate. It, it, it uh, makes the pause very bumpy over that section. 
Metallica just went through. And then a 35 again. Metallica doesn't crash. He's going to hit. Gonna be around 145, possibly. Yeah, it just goes to show how, really, in general, I feel like this game has developed in terms, you know, the competition and the standard of play in general. I remember in the day when we were playing, there, there really was hardly anybody who was doing any uh, no, decent three. time. Yeah, we were just vain the book as we go, and Oof. 147, which is really solid. I have to ask that that last corner from Metallica made me very nervous. When you catch the back of the pod on the uh, on the walls, it can easily kill you. So. Yes, he was lucky he didn't die. So Metallica wins by about a second. So now it is three. And now here comes Vengeance. This is the track that I really feel like does not belong in the amateur circuit. I feel like it belongs in the galactic circuit. Executioner should be in the amateur circuit. Yeah, I would argue it's probably harder than the Gauntlet, which is on the Invitational circuit list. No, I would agree, too. The Gauntlet is really easy unless you're going for the skip, which I know you found back in the day, and I had the skip hunt to find it because you kept it secret. <laughs> oh, I'm not just saying this is the best part. This is like has one of the most atrocious to uh, Uvu tubes in the track, because the track is the Uber Ford tracks like Vengeance are chock full of ore to crash into. And the first part of this tube is especially atrocious because you have it full of ore and then a reactor core beam that even with invincibility on kills you if you hit it. <laughs> yeah, I actually prefer the tubes on Vengeance to the Gorla actually, perhaps a little bit. I remember when we were competing back in the day how I preferred the tubes in Executioner over Vengeance, and you were vice versa. Yeah, I, I'm quite surprised actually by that. I, I mean, I was a thought on the Nintendo with 64, uh, you know, 24 frames that the tubes would be hell, I imagine. But uh... Yeah, the tubes are usually hell, but with Executioner, if you just break and then point down at the tube, I could usually hold a very consistent line, so... No, we don't hate Vengeance that much, Dom Ray. It's, uh, it's a pretty good track, actually. I'm pretty fond of it. And it's always exciting to watch in the uh, in tournament. I don't expect anyone to come close to the uh, 305 here, just because this track is so dangerous when you're going for the fastest time on this track. Yeah, it's it's actually a favorite of mine last year. I used it uh, on several occasions in last year's annual tournament, um, which went pretty well. Yeah, this is also a track because of that tube that's most optimal or higher frame rates. Because it's a lot more stable you're a lot more in control at higher frame rates, but there's also a higher risk of getting soft locked into a rock at higher frame rates. Yeah, I still actually hadn't discovered a way of getting out of that. You have to uh, reset. Okay. <laughs> I, uh... How do you reset? <laughs> Restart the race is what I meant by reset. Oh, right, okay. I, th I thought you meant you could continue the race. Uh, no, 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 no. I meant restart. All right, so it's and here we go. This, And this is like, see, you have to narrowly dodge that reactor core beam. It looks like a giant version of the binders used here, but don't. It will kill you even with invincibility on. You see the tubes, the speeds uh, Metallic is reaching over 1,200. Uh, yeah, it gives units. you a 200 speed boost. It's a new lap record. We have 102 and 103 by Nacho and Metallica. One, that is really fast for this track. Yeah, very, very fast first lap time. Yeah. I know I actually was the first player to hold the booster down that first straight right after the shared section. I 
I can't remember that far back. Oh, yeah. Aggressive line from Knock, trying yeah. to hold that boost to the slot there. That's. Uh... Oh, Nacho hit the reactor core beam. Oof. Yeah, I remember I had some very strange deaths on this track uh, when I experienced some frame drops. Which can be fatal in these uh, tubes. And yeah, you, like we said, you have to be very careful with the... Oh, Metallica crashed! So now it's even again! Uh, that, that particular spot is notorious, actually, for, for doing that. Yeah, it's a lot of cases I see people lose the boost and crash because it just throws their patterns yeah. out of whack. Yes, that's it, yeah. Like the pod suddenly jerks in the direction you're steering because of that sudden loss of speed, which causes you to hit walls tighter than you think. So at the moment, um, very close, I'm guessing, between Metallica and Nacho. Yeah. If Nacho wins this, it's going to be a tiebreaker. I suppose that's, in a way, a good thing about having seven races. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And we have final section. And 308 with a death. And is that a 1 0? Yes, that, that looks like a 1 0 lap, which is insane. That's crazy, actually, with a death. Yeah. So, yeah, it's now 3 3. So, so, so this next race is going to be a tiebreaker for Nacho and Metallica. And uh, Nock just coming in to finish off her final lap. And this next track in Spice Mine Run is like probably the most deceptively easy track in the game because it has so many straights that are super easy to boost on, and that just fro and that just makes you lose your guard more than usual. Yeah, it's very easy to fall asleep and just uh, do something silly on this track. Yeah. Or just abuse the boost like crazy. Yeah, I did it. I did a test actually to to see how much time you could lose if you were inefficient with your your boosts, and I found it was around about five seconds. That's massive. Yeah, like if you boost as frequently as you possibly can, it, it's like five seconds slower than normal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Nacho just decided to do a me. Uh, he, he hit the mine cart while you hit the dozer. Yeah, I, I hit that wall as well in uh, in a previous race. I seem to crash more on this track than uh, the hard one. Well, they said if you hit... Well, it seems like this track punishes you if you're on world record pace, because if you're on world record pace, the dozer's in this precarious position where if you don't angle it just right, you crash into it. Yeah, just getting memory flashbacks there. <laughs> oh yeah, tourney flashbacks to me because I remember last year how the last year's match ended with Mike with you crashing into the dozer after a 10 second sync pause and it was 10 second sync pause then you crashing immediately. Yeah, we should probably explain we're discussing the uh, the grand final of last year's uh, and Yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. I have okay. to it was slightly amusing, though. <laughs> yeah, I heard you. I, I'm glad that you were laughing because the reactions were insane. And I didn't even catch the full scope of it until I saw the Twitch stream in replay. Well, I obviously practiced it, um, you know, away from the tournament. And uh, I hadn't experienced one death there. And then to have it in the final was kind of unusual. Yeah. So just one and... of those. Yep so true and here we go we are going into the final rap final race with a tiebreaker between nacho and metallica this is exciting didn't expect this what a great way great 
we're at with a bang for sure. Yeah, I knew it would always be very competitive. I mean, this was a track I remember particularly from Nacho, uh, who did a very good time here with no upgrades against me last year. Yeah, that one came down to that was one of the matches between you and Nacho that was down to like like hundredths or tenths of a second. Yeah. I, I... I think, I mean, I think there was a closer one with Scrappers, but I think this one stood out to me more because we both did very good times on this track. Yeah. So it was Nacho uh, also last year also had muscle memory from doing the circuit and no upgrade real time attack by using Beto originally. Oops. When <laughs> yeah, no sorry. upgrades, it's the. <laughs> The fastest is this bowls, but Ben here will be seen here. Yeah, and unfortunately, it's quite a significant difference between no upgrades bowls and no upgrades uh, Bido as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's also significant even between no upgrade bowls and Ben. But no upgrade Ben is far easier to handle than no upgrade bowls. And you might be wondering why all these players are using Ben Quadinaros, and that's because Ben Quadinaros is the fastest pod in the game for all but two tracks, which are not in the circuit. Yeah, Ben has a extremely high top speed, so he, he gets an additional 400 speed units when he boosts. He also has an extremely long boost, which is one of the most important stats of any pod. Um, and it, even his turning actually is pretty good, like especially when you use the sliding, um, you know, as, as well. So uh, for the majority of tracks, he's able to have a very high average speed over the whole track, which. Uh, is one of the main reasons why um, you know he performs best usually. Yeah, highest boost for us paired with the uh, second longest boost duration after Mars Guo, and Mars Guo is not that much longer than Ben. Yeah, I, th I think actually Ben even goes further on one boost than Mars does just because of the additional speed that he has. Yes, I think so too. As you see, it's not really a crazy track, this. It's just the case of who can save the most time at every given section, really, is what this track is testing. And then we've got this uh, this section here, which Nacho and Metallica are currently on. Nox coming in now, uh, which obviously, you can see, just builds a little bit more speed than, than usual over the, this section, even though it's uphill. Yeah, it has an uphill yeah. portion at first because you're going uphill on a conveyor belt that gives you a speed boost. Then you're supposed to floor it while you're taking advantage of that speed boost and then hold it all the way through the downslope, ideally. Yeah, and then there's that risky section at the bottom, which, uh, again, another potential kill spot there. Which actually was another death I took at Spice Mine Run, thinking about it. I think that was a year before, though, possibly. I think so too. Here we go, final lap. Very close between Nacho and Metallica. And this is where the dozer can get in a very precarious spot. See how it's right in between there? And Metallica did the death you did in that grand final. Yeah. So. Nacho probably is going to win this because of the same thing that happened in that grand final match. Yeah, it was unfortunate for Metallica. I think uh, Nacho is actually ahead anyway, I think by a couple of seconds if I noted the time. Yeah, he looked like he was a second ahead before the crash, but now since the crash takes about five seconds or he's like six seconds ahead. Yeah, I did a test actually. I found it was anything between kind of three and a half and about seven and a half seconds, depending on the conditions under which you crash. So, uh, yeah, but average I think is about five. Yeah, average was about five. Yeah. See, it's and Nacho comes in with a 342, and that actually beats Davies. Spice my run of 343. Yeah, excellent time from Nacho there. So Nacho wins this in a near squeaker.
But yeah, that was a very exciting first match uh, for the start of this event. No. Kind of, yeah, a really exciting way to start. I didn't expect it to go into a tiebreaker in the end. Well, I had a feeling it was going to be close, actually, between... Uh, Nacho and Metallica because yeah. of last year. And actually, a pretty excellent performance from Nock as well, I thought. I mean... Yeah, for anyone who's ever rookie, played, pretty good. For anyone who's ever played this game, I mean, those times are difficult to, to achieve. You know, those are, those are not easy times. Hey, Nacho. Hey, Nock. Oh. Oh, hi. That was fun. That was a lot of yeah, fun. it was. I'm glad you had fun. That was, that was the purpose of it. And it looks like Metallica might be joining too in chat. So, but I didn't expect it to go into a tiebreaker between you and Nach Nacho into the end. Okay, Metallica has to go. So, thank oh. you. But I didn't expect it to go into a tiebreaker into Spice Mine Run. That was a fun way to start this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, and that Spice Mine Run was, was actually a PB for me. I wondered <laughs> about that actually. Yeah, I saw it was uh, listed on on your um your record. So yeah, well done. Thank you. So that so that so you're gonna probably be submitting that to Speedrun.com afterward. Oh, absolutely. That's but it's kind of funny. Uh, went to training, Vengeance, and Spice Man were all actual PBs for me. PB oh, even with a death on Vengeance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that, you know, that, on what, Vengeance. What going on Wait a minute, that doesn't seem right. I gotta, I gotta look back at that. You crashed into the reactor core beam. I on did. the second lap. <laughs> and the only reason I did is because I got confused on which tilt direct with put me which way so instead mm -hmm. of going vertical i went horizontal i was like no and it was too late to react mm -hmm. yeah it, it seems like you didn't lose too much time for that i mean having a straight away with the death is uh is is excellent so um yeah actually wait a minute. Uh, yeah hmm. so i know the one lap was definitely a pp for me because I, I got one flat but yeah one flat i that's what i looked at it's like like one flat that's like really solid for this it's like one flat's like very uh world record pace pretty much for the full track mm, okay because the world record for the vengeance lap full track is around 59 seconds so one yeah. minute so yeah one minute flat is really solid Nice. How did you um, how did you feel about your match, uh, Nock? Because we we both thought you did uh, pretty well for um, you know someone who's never done this before. Yeah, aside from my betos and the end of Vengeance, I'm very happy overall. I set two or three new PBs, which are you know still ten seconds slow compared to what I would like, but you know. Yeah, excellent. Nice. Getting Vengeance, better. Vengeance um... is always is always a difficult track in uh, in tournament. Yeah. <laughs> I was happy with my first two laps, and then the third one, I think I died four times. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. no. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, I think some... Did, did you find nerves getting getting to you a bit at that point, or...? Not, I don't even know what happened on Vengeance specifically. It felt like laps one and two, I was sort of locked in on the, you know, easier strats I had practiced, and then lap three, just everything stopped looking right. <laughs> I've had that happen too with Vengeance from, and I go back to 2008, so it's a really hard track. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. for sure. It's one of those tracks that makes you question why it's an amateur circuit. <laughs> yes, I feel like, I honestly feel like Executioner and Vengeance should be swapped. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Putting something without a gravity tube on the amateur circuit would be a pretty big uh, deal. Yeah. Yeah. Then again, that's the game though, right? It's... You're supposed to go through stupid hard tracks and crash all the time. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. should probably say it's uh, it's it's not an unusual thing to crash in this game, even for, for very good players. It's rather an inevitability 
uh, just because you know it's, it's it's a very very fast paced racing game, and obviously with all the the you know uncharacteristic hazards of a you know a science fiction racing game, it's uh, you know it, it's very rare to get through uh, more than a few races without experiencing a death, really. So. Yeah. And even then, only on a handful of tracks. Yeah, that's true mm -hmm. as well. Some tracks as well are, I think, notoriously bad. I, I remember, I, th I think some of the worst, if I can remember from last year, included Grabvine and uh, Zuga, surprisingly. But I think that's because of that bulldozer right at the end of the circuit, which everyone likes hitting. So <laughs> I like calling it the sucker punching dozer. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Yeah, that, that those are gonna be a pain in the butt on Zuga. Oh well, does um anyone have anything else to add before we wrap up? No, I mean other than just you know, thank you for organizing this. This is an awesome event. Oh well, thanks. And uh, you know, thanks as well for um, you know, participating because obviously, you know, uh David's a very good friend of mine and um you know, it's, it's great. It's, he, you know, he's very happy to know that people have sort of appreciated his, uh, what he's done. And, um, you know, it's just good to see some straightforward racing as well. So it's, uh, and uh, obviously it's been nice to have uh, my co-commentator, just who, like me, was uh, one of the old school players, Ben, with me. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's great, but... But um, yeah, personally, I'd like to thank everybody who has, uh, you know, been in he of help for organizing this event with me. Um, you know, for all of our players today, for Speed Gaming, and um, for you, Game Draco, as well, for joining me in commentary. No, this was a great way to start it when both of us were from Davies' era and knew him probably more than any other runner in the game. Yeah, David is definitely a beginning pioneer of, um, you know, this game really, really, like, with me, had an enthusiasm for, uh, you know, just seeing what could be done on it and, and take it to a, a pro level as opposed to just, you know, playing it casually. So, and it's, I think it's, um, you know, David was one of my inspirations as a player. So, um, yeah. Same definitely. here with me. And all three of us were like, top three for that era yeah and actually i was um i should probably just say for the players who are here today you know um i was saying earlier it's, it's great to see the development of this game and the the level now which players are, are playing to is uh is, is really good to see yeah yeah it's a lot of fun to bring this game to something that i didn't think was possible when i was you know a six-year-old kid dying over and over on abyss <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was dying that way until i found the skip by miles who f was the first pioneer of the skip of that track i suppose that's one way to avoid getting killed is just to not do the track and do the skip yes <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> so true